What do you say, guys? Should we get the band back together? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Through the Pages, with Dee. This might be a long video today. Uh, this is a review for Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. Yeah. I have loved this book. This, oh, what can I say? If this book ever leaves me, I will be sad. That's how much of an impact this book has had on me. If it ever goes, if I ever lose it, I will be so sad. So sad. I will replace it right away because I have loved this book. Before we get into that, I just want to say something right at the beginning of the video because you may not watch till the end. I may bore the living out of you, so you may not watch till the end. I have been commenting on a booktuber's videos called John, who is Talking Story. And when he says that he will comment back and talk to you, he absolutely means that. He does every single time you comment, he comments back. And I've spoken to him briefly within those comments about having a channel, just starting out. And I actually asked him, did he mind if I pinched a couple of ideas from one of his videos that I'd watched in relation to this video today? This is why I'm mentioning it. And he had no issues with that whatsoever. He just is one of the nicest guys I have ever kind of spoken to I haven't directly spoken to him but you know that chit chat and comments what a gracious nice guy John Minton is he really is I do not for a second believe that that is in any way shape or form fake I think that is absolutely who he is you can tell that by the relationship that he has with his son Jacob and big shout out to Jacob for the lighting and all the editing and just everything that he does on John's videos he is a credit to you, John. He really is a credit to you. And I just wanted to put that out there that I think John Minton needs far more subscribers. He's at 4,000, which is amazing. That's fantastic. But he definitely needs more. He definitely needs more. He should be up there. He really should be up there. Um, so I just wanted to give him a shout out to say, you have, watching your videos has inspired me. It has made me think of new books that I want to read. Your passion for what you read is it's it's visceral it, it you can't help but want to read those books by the way you deliver what it is that's made you want to read that so yeah you're a massive influence to me john and i just wanted to put that out there and everybody should go and check out john minton talking story go and check him out because i just think that is awesome and i had a lovely chat last night on matt on books his 2000 subscriber party um, with those guys there, there was Matt, there was Eva, um, there was Joe, there was Raph, there was Kyle, um, Brian popped in from the Bell Tolls for a little bit. Um, yes, and it, it was just lovely. Um, Eva, what a lovely, lovely girl. Um, I know she loves the banter. I love a bit of banter. I like to play with the lads, um, see just how far I can push it, because I'm a bit of a lad. I'm not really a girly girl. I may be wearing the red lipstick. I may have the earrings in and a bit of makeup, but that's about as far as it goes. You can see I'm, I roll with the boys. I'm, I'm a lad. It. So, yeah, just the, just wanted to put that out there. If I, if I appreciate a human being, I just want to say it. And John Minton, talking story, Eva, she was only Eva. Great people, great, great people to actually take the time out of their day to speak back to you and even give you some compliments and give you some advice. Thank you. Just wanted to say that. Thank you. So let's get into this. Let's do it. Let's do this. I've come up with a system as in far as far as rating my books with the five star system. And I'm calling it, by the way, TM trademarked. Don't be pinching. The quips system. The quips or queeps. C W W E P S. The Queeps system. So that means character, world building, written word, emotional impact, plot and pace. Quips. 
however you want to word it, but it's mine, trademark. No, it's not. If you want, if you want to take it, take it. But hey, listen, there's other booktubers out there that have been around for a hell of a lot longer than I have. You know, a hell of a lot more than I do. Go and take some of theirs. Go, go, go watch their videos and get inspiration from them because I'm just starting. I'm brand new. I'm flying by the seat of my pants, guys. You know, I'm a Gen Xer. Don't know much about text. This is all done on my phone. There's a light ring, you know, old school. But, you know, if you if you want to take it, hey, take it. That's a huge compliment. Let me know you've took it. And I can't give you anything, but I'll, I'll certainly give you my thanks. That's what I'll give you, my thanks. That's for free. You can have that. Let's get into this book. Nicholas Ames, Kings of the Wild. I loved it. I loved it. Characters. So your main character is Clay. Um, Clay Cooper. I don't think he's like the... So in essence, this book is related to 70s rock. Hence why we are donning the Iron Maiden today. Um, I was going to wear Queen, but I quite like the black, so I'll put Iron Maiden on. Thanks, Joes. This is my daughter's t-shirt, actually. <laughs> She's out. She doesn't know I've got it on. So, mm, 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 mm. Um, she won't mind. She doesn't care. So, yeah, it, the, the Easter eggs within this book are all 70s rock bands. That's so cool. That drew me in straight away. 70s rock bands. Are you kidding me? My all-time favourite band, all-time, is Queen. Freddie Mercury is a vocal master. So, anyway, I digress. So, it's 70s bands. And there are all little Easter eggs in here. The hidden, like Motley Crue's in there. It's just used as a term, like him and his Motley Crue, they're in there. Um, I've, I've sort of tapped. These aren't all in relation to the Easter eggs. I mean, come on, I'm not that much of a genius. But I tagged a few where I caught them. Um, there was also Nicholas, if I may call you Nicholas, or Mr. Ames, if you prefer. Nicholas, oh, your little labyrinth with the, oh, genius genius straight away i knew i knew exactly what, what you meant as soon as i read that i knew exactly what you meant so your main character is clay cooper don't think he's the front guy although i'm not too sure but i don't think he's the front guy i think gabriel is meant to be the front guy sort of the lead singer clay is in my perspective probably more like the lead guitarist um, so it's, it's from clay's point of view everything is from clay's point of view and gabriel his friend has come to him and they've been disbanded for quite some time. They are a band. <clears throat> they are a band. And they're a band of warriors, of fighters. And they fought some time ago and they've broke up and they've gone off to do their own things and they've got married and had children. And Gabe's got a daughter. He's, he's called Gabriel, but we shot it to Gabe. Gabe's had a daughter called Rose and she's decided in herself she wants to be in a band. Like I would, quite frankly. I would be like, Dad, see you later. I'm going doing this. So off she goes and Gabe is concerned, worried about her. So he goes to see Clay to bring the band back together to find his daughter because he hasn't heard from her and obviously he's worried. So that's the crux of the story is it's the dad wanting to find his daughter. So he goes to Clay and then they, tra they travel about a bit and they go and find the rest of the old band group. The, other, the old band group are Matrix, uh, Moog, Moog. And um, uh, Ganelon. Oh, his name nearly escaped me then. Ganelon. So there's five. Gabe, uh, Clay, Matrix, Ganelon, Moog. Moog is a genius character. Genius character. And, might I say, my youngest girl. Um, shout out to you, Fee. LGBTQ inclusion in this book. Moog is a gay man. And that, to me... Again, I think that's probably why he's my favourite character. My daughter is gay. My youngest girl is gay. How can I not love that? Any book that includes LGBTQ, I'm there. I'm for it. I love that. So, yeah. So, those are the characters. Then we've got sort of the, the sub-characters. Clay's the main. Then we've got those characters and sub-characters. We've got, um, and the villain. We've got the villain in the book who is Last Leaf. We have a sort of sub-villain who is um, Sabatha a.k.a. Laxfer. Depends. When she's Laxfer, um, she's the, the villain. When she's Sabatha, do you hint the band? 
sad Bertha. Um, she's nicer, um, but she's not entirely a villain throughout the entirety of the story. At some point, there's a little whoop, and the last leaf is the villain. And last leaf is a duke, and you also find out more about him, which which sort of explains things a little bit more as to why he's potentially doing what he's doing. And I found that very interesting. I found that a very interesting part of the story. Um, it could have easily got lost in the characters because the characters draw you in so much. They're so, they bring you in so much. You could quite easily miss um, who it is that Last Leaf actually actually is and what the point of all this is to him. Um, but I won't, I won't spoil it. I'm trying my best. I'm really, I'm trying my best not to say too much because... I just want to scream about this book from the rooftops. If you have not read Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames, read it. I feel the same about this as I did the first book of Malazan. Read it. Please read it. So we've got um, interchangeable characters, meaning they come in and out of chapters. We've got Shadow, who is a drone. We've got Calarek, who is the booker. Calarek is kind of like the guy who books their gigs back in the day when they were a band. He books their gigs. Um, we've got uh, Tiano, Taino, I don't know how you say that. Um, he is a troll who is a doctor. We've got Dinatra. I skipped a character then because I have a reason. We've got Dinatra who is a Gorgon, similar to Medusa in a way. Um, we have Kit who is a reverend. Um, but he keeps being referred to as a zombie. He's not a zombie, he's a reverend. The reason why he's not a zombie he doesn't eat people so therefore he's not a zombie um and one of my absolute favorites and th this was a, a creature monster type thing gregor and dane the two-headed etting loved them love that character so there's plenty of characters to go at and you can't help but feel for every single one of them every single one you want the band of five, you want Saga, which is Clay and Galen. And you want Saga to to succeed and win and rue the day. And oh, you just, you just, you're just so there with them, like, come on, lads. I just love them. I love them. Um, so, and the, all the sub-characters, sub I just love them. And there's a particular section where it comes to Gregor and Dane, and I physically cried. I physically cried. I turned to my daughter and tried to tell her how the prose, because I've worked out what prose is now, who do I think I am, the prose in this book can be beautiful. There's a lot of joking and a hell of a lot of humour, and I literally laughed out loud a good majority of this book. But um, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Characters. Characters get a full-blown staff. Full staff. So we've got full staff of characters. World building. There's plenty of places, but the main focus is on the heart wilds, which is kind of a forest that is absolutely riddled with creatures. And there are creatures. There are tons of creatures. Tons of them. And they're all so different and unique and it's just amazing and you don't get bored of the fact that there's so many different creatures. It's not boring. It's never tedious. So, yeah, on that alone, I gave world building a full-blown star. I don't need to know all the time what the shape of a leaf is. Sometimes I just need to know what my basic surroundings look like and what there is in there. And that's what this book does. It's this is what it looks like, and this is what's in there. So I enjoyed that. Okay, so written word, prose. You sometimes maybe think that this is just a bit of a comedy. It's just a, it's just a comedy book. You know, there's nothing more than just the humour and the fact that these guys just are having a good time, even though they're older. And But there are certain sections where the writing to me was so beautiful that I had to put a marker in the book so that I can go back and just read that again. There is a particular section where Kit talks about what it's like to be immortal. And the way that Nicholas Ames writes that is 
almost poetry. I thought it was beautiful. I really thought it was beautiful. And then the the writing where it comes to Gregor and Dane, the two-headed Etting. And so I hope I don't spoil too much here. Gregor and Dane is a two-headed creature. Gregor can see, but Dane is blind. So Gregor spends his time explaining what the world looks like to Dane. And rather than just saying, this is a pile of shit place, and it's, it's hanging, it's disgusting, he makes absolutely everything sound beautiful. And the way Nicholas Ames write this, writes this, it is beautiful. You want, and Dane's response is he wants to touch and he wants to feel everything. And obviously, Gregor can't let him do that because then the, the jig is up, you know, because it doesn't look like that. But what he does instead is he just says to him, we can do that later. We've got to move on now. So we can do that later. The way it's written, oh, got me in the feels. It got me in the feels. And I won't say what happens there, but I cried. I cried. I could, I'm tearing up again now thinking about it. <clears throat> Emotional impact. Speaks for itself, doesn't it? Oh, so sorry. Written word, full star. Full star for written word. So, so far we're at three. Three full stars. Emotional impact. Speaks for itself. I cried. I laughed. I just kept turning pages. Oh, it is so good. It is so good. I am struggling maybe to understand how you cannot enjoy this book. I mean, that's fair play. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Who am I to judge? You know, I don't judge. I'm not a judgmental person. I think each to their own, you know, whatever makes you happy, whatever floats your boat, I'm down for that. As long as you've got a smile on your face, I'm all good. But this is just, it's just a piece of work. It really is. It is super, super awesome super awesome it's everything that i needed to give me a boost everything i needed to make me feel the feels and it did that and it's doing it to me again just thinking about it so emotional impact a huge star if i could give it more than one star it would get five stars for emotional impact on its own but it's getting the star plot and pace just a page turner you don't want to put it down. You want to know what the next part is. You want to know who they're going to have to come up against next. You want to know what Last Leaf's intentions are. You want to know if um, La Last Larkspur or Sabatha, um, what they're up to. You want to know what's happening with, with the guys. You just want to know, have they survived this? Have they survived that? Are they going to, are they going to get to Rose? Are they going to make it? What creatures are coming next? And it's, it's, it's the, the old tale of dad wants to save daughter. I don't see how you can not be enthralled with that plot line. Um, and like I said, the pace, it's not overly like steamrolling. You don't need to, you don't need to race through it. But it's, it keeps you there. It keeps you interested. It keeps you wanting to turn those pages and get to that next chapter. And then when you get to that next chapter and you're thinking, I really should put this down now. You don't want to because it's like, oh, yeah, but what's going next? What's going to happen next? So for plot and pace, another star. So my maths is correct. We have a five-star book on our hands here. Now, you do know that I also have, from the last review video, that I have a bonus where you can get an extra star. It doesn't rate it any higher than a five because in my system, the quips, we're not going higher than a five. There's also the bonus of a cover. This this book doesn't need that bonus. It doesn't need me to entertain the bonus. I like the cover. It's not the best I've seen. Um, maybe it could have been something more inspired on a band's logo or, you know, like Queen sometimes used to have um, on their album covers, they had the, the monarchy type thing. It could have had something along those lines, but maybe that would have been a little bit too much of a nod towards... 70s rock bands but the cover's fine it's fine um it says what it is it shows you who the characters are so it doesn't really need a bonus star for me because it's a five star book it's five five stars it's five it's five five 
please, 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 if you haven't read it, please read it. Just throw it in there. If you've got a TBR already and you, you know, you, you're tied to this TBR, I can't, but then you find yourself in a rut and maybe you're just reading one genre in this TBR and you, you sort of like, I need a bit of a break. This is all very serious. I need a bit of a break. Pick it up. Kings of the Wild, Nicholas Ames. Pick it up and give it a go. Because I am telling you, this will make you laugh. This will make you cry. I have adored it. Loved it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Nicholas Ames. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. So, the, yeah. That's um, Kings of the Wild. I adored it adored it that will never ever leave my bookshelf ever ever i loved it um so that's that what else do i have to tell you wednesday excuse me that's because i got myself a bit teary and now my nose is running that's attractive isn't it uh wednesday i will be finishing dead house gates before wednesday so wednesday's video to watch my review on dead house gates malazan I suggest you watch that. I'm not going to say anything about it. I suggest you watch it. If you saw my first video, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. If you haven't, give that a watch. I would do the, the linky thing, but I don't know how you do it because I don't have any um, software to do anything on a laptop or anything like that. I just purely use my phone. So I could do this ping. I could do this ping, but I don't have the software. So I don't know how you do that. Um, Maybe in time I'll get there. Just not quite yet. So I have a video, um, my review on Gardens of the Moon. I think it speaks for itself as to how I felt about that book. And we'll see what Wednesday brings. We'll just see. And then on Friday, hopefully, I will be doing my February wrap-up of what I've read so far. And what my March TBR is going to be. I will be announcing my March TBR. I have two spaces. Um, I'm looking to potentially read between, I've read seven, no, sorry, I've read eight in February, eight books. I'm looking to do the same for March, potentially nine. So my last two spots are, I don't know yet. I've got the rest all figured out, I think. I haven't got um, order of read figured out yet. I don't know which, which order I'm reading them in, but I have the books I want to read. Um, Neil Gaiman's in there. Um, there's more Stephen Erickson in there. Who else is in there? Um, Simon. I can't think of his surname, but go and ask Eve if that's a little little hint to who that is. Um, oh, Jacqueline Hager, if I remember that right, is in there. Um, who else? Oh, that, that's just the ones I can remember off the top of my head. But yeah, those are some of my uh, TBR for March, which I'll be doing on Friday. So that's me for today. Um, please, like I said, give John from Talking Stories and Jacob, don't let's not forget Jacob, um, a look on his channel, Talking Story. I know I'm not a very big channel, but I do like to promote other channels, even though I know they've been there longer than I have. But still, that doesn't mean to say we can't spread the love and share the love, does it? If I like someone, then why wouldn't I tell you about someone? You know, I like a lot of booktubers, but this this guy, John, isn't um, hasn't been around for that long on YouTube, but certainly does not discriminate as to who he helps and has no fear of sharing what he's learned so far and reaching out a helpful hand. So I just wanted to say that about John and Eva last night in the comments. Um, she was wonderful, fantastic girl. So yeah, go and check those two guys out. I will link their channels in the description. Also, my Goodreads is now linked in the description. My Discord will be linked in the description. Um, you can communicate with me on Discord. You can communicate with that, with that. Excuse me. You can communicate with me via my email. I may start a Twitter account. I'm not sure yet, but I may do. Um, I just don't have the memory space on my phone, so I may do it on my laptop. I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, that's about it, I think. Um, anything else that I don't think of right now, just look in the description for. I'm still ploughing on for that 50 subscribers so I can do a live on my birthday. 
Um, if we get there, we get there. If we don't, hey, listen, I'll still be here regardless and bore you all to death with my monotonous Mancunian drone from Britain. So, uh, But yeah, other than that, that's me. Hope you guys all have a absolutely rocking day and I will see you on Wednesday. So other than that, see you through the pages, guys. <laughs>